Hey everybody, Ryan from Ho Rhino Hockey Channel here. So, my floor is finally done. I'm finally able, I also have Aaron at back, so I'm finally able to do videos again. Hooray! Alright, well, I'm sorry I missed pretty much the entire end of the first round, other than a couple series, but I'll get to those. And we have game seven tonight between Vegas and Minnesota. Be interesting to see how this game goes out, this series goes out. Anyways, Tomorrow we start round two, even though round one is not complete and may not be complete for another five, six days. But we're starting round two. Our first matchup will be between the Boston Bruins, who beat the Washington Capitals, and the New York Islanders, who beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, alright, here we go. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's get started with this video. Alright. First, we go through how they matched up during the season. Boston was 3-3-2 against the Islanders, and the Islanders were 5-2-1. So, there you go. First matchup was a 1-0 win for the Islanders in regulation. Next matchup was a 4-2 win for the Islanders, then a 7-2 win for the Islanders. Then a 2-1 shootout victory for the Islanders. Then a 4-3 victory in overtime for the Islanders. Islanders dominated this one early. The last three were all Boston. 4-1 Boston victory, followed by a 3-0 Boston victory, followed by a 3-2 overtime victory for Boston. So early Islanders, late Bruins. Alright, head-to-head, -head, Marshawn and Pasternak were the top scorers for Boston. Marshawn had 4 goals, 3 assists for 7 points. Pasternak, 2 goals, 5 assists for 7 points. Krejci had 6 points, Bergeron 4, and Hall had 4. Tuka Rask was the top goalie, being 2-2. Two, two and two. The Islanders, Pajot was the top scorer with 8 points, 5 goals, 3 assists. Barzell, 7 points. Letty, 5 points. Everly, 4 points. Bovillier, 4 points. And Polak, 4 points. Varlamov was definitely their top goalie, being 5-1 and one against the Bruins. Alright, top scores during the year. We went through this in the first round, so I'm not going to go through these again. You can see them here on the screen. If you want to read them more in depth, hit that pause button so you can read them more. I'm going to skip on through. Alright, top scores in the playoffs so far. For Boston, Pasternak has 6 points, 2 goals, 4 assists. Charlie McAvoy, 5 points, all assists. Patrice Bergeron, 4 points, and they have 6 players with tied with 3 points, including Marchand. New York Islanders, Anthony Bavillier and John Gabriel Pajot lead them with seven points each. Three goals, four assists for Bavillier and Gabriel Pajot, John Gabriel Pajot, a goal and six assists. Brock Nelson and Josh Bailey both had three goals and three assists for six points. And Scott Mayfield had four points. So, I guess you can say Bavillier is kind of a surprise. I think this is where they expected him to be, though, so I wouldn't call it a huge surprise, but a definite hooray, finally, type of thing. By the way, I forgot to mention, I have not found my microphone yet, so I'm just using the microphone on my laptop, so if it sounds funky, I'm sorry. Hopefully I can find that microphone tonight in time for the Vegas-Minnesota game. Alright, moving on. Goalie-wise, during the regular season, we saw those numbers in the first videos involving these two. So, once again, if you want to see these more in depth, hit that pause button and go back to my first videos from the first round and you can hear my more in-depth in -depth talking about them. Goalies so far in the playoffs for these two teams. Tuka Rask was amazing in that first round series, going 4-1. Had a 1.81 goals against average and a 9-4-1 save percentage. Elias Sorokin was lights out for the Islanders. This is, I think, how they want Sorokin to play. Or not, this is how they want. This is how they want him to play. And he is doing it, finally. 4-0, 1.95 goals against average with 943 save percentage. Barlamov, not so good. 0-2, 3.61 goals against average and 903 save percentage. I would say play Sorokin, even though Varlamov had a better record against Boston in the regular season. You can play him. Have a short leash if you want to. That's fine. He is a rookie. But looking at those numbers, I would play Sorokin. 
hundred percent. And no question, Rask is going to play barring injury. All right, injuries. Speaking of injuries, for the Islanders, Oliver Wallstrom is day to day with an undisclosed injury. He is doubtful for Game One, so there's a possibility, but there's also a possibility he won't. Andrews Lee, on the other hand, is out for the season with a knee injury. I would not expect to see him back anytime soon. For Boston, they have a bit of a longer list. Jakob Zabril is day-to-day with an upper body injury. He could return sometime in round two. They did not specify if that was game one. If that was later, we'll find out. Andre Kasha, they announced that he's out for the playoffs with upper body injury. I feel bad for Kasha. I always liked him on the Ducks. He plays great when he plays, but, God, he gets injured a lot. Stephen Confer out for the playoffs as well. Hand injury. That's unfortunate because he's been a very good depth defender for them whenever they needed him. John Moore still out indefinitely with hip injury. Jeremy Lazan, or Lauzon, sorry. Day-to-day with a hand injury. Could return for game one, though. And Kevin Miller, or Miller, sorry. I don't know why I went Miller. i thinking baseball. The guy got pegged in the face the other day. He. But Kevin Miller of the Boston Bruins in hockey, not baseball, day-to-day with an undisclosed injury and no timetable for his return, so I would not expect to see him in game one tomorrow. All right, last round. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Washington, or Boston beat Washington four games to one, and the Islanders beat Pittsburgh four games to two. Both teams were lower seeds, and as far as we can tell so far, that is most likely going to be the only series, other than maybe the North Division, where there's still a chance Montreal could win. Slim, but it is Toronto after all. Sorry, Toronto fans, but it is reality. I'm sorry. It sucks, but it's just how it is. Alright, previous playoff matches these two teams have played. They've only played each other twice in their entire existence. Boston has lost both matchups back in 79-80 and 82 and 83 seasons. The first matchup in 79-80 was a first round matchup, which the Islanders won in five games. And the 82-83 matchup was a third round or conference finals matchup where the Islanders won in six. Both years, the Islanders went on to win the cup. So the Islanders, I'm sure right now, are going, oh god, we need to win this series because that means... Dun, dun, dun. The cup is in our grasp. In which case, they go to the conference finals if they win, so definitely a possibility. There's a 1 in 4 chance at that point, so. But Boston has lost by a combined 3 wins to 8 losses in these two matchups so far, which, granted, none of these guys played at this time, and hell, most of them probably weren't even born at those times. So, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, it's just a history, it's not necessarily. Go in fact now. Honestly, I thought these two had played last year or the year before, but they hadn't. So, all right, dark horse for Boston. I'm going to say Taylor Hall because in this matchup between these two during the regular season, he played. I think it was three games, and he had four goals in those three games against the Islanders. Keep doing that, Hall. And also, this is the first time being outside the first round, and only the second time he's been in the playoffs. So. Hopefully he can say, okay, I want this. Let's do this. So, Taylor Hall is my pick for the dark horse for this team. Now, I'm not going to pick someone like Marshawn, Pashanak, um, or Bergeron, because we know what we're going to get from them. They're going to be the top line. But Hall could be the difference between if they get shut down, they need someone else. And he's that guy, I think. And you know what? A dark horse player is someone who could... Win you a series just by being a great player at that time. Alright, Dark Horse for the Islanders. This one's a little different. I am going for the top player of the Islanders, Matthew Barzell. He had, I believe it was two points in the first round. Maybe it was three. All assists. So he has no goals in the playoffs so far. He played really well against Boston this year. And they need him to be better. I mean, they've gotten lucky so far that they've won... A series without him scoring a goal. Nonetheless, being mostly shut down. Which, granted, he is going to get the tougher assignments. So, he'll probably be playing against Charlie McAvoy, is my guess. So, and, well, Miller's hurt right now. But still, he'll be getting the top defenders one way or the other. 
but he needs to find a way. Because, I mean, you look at Boston's first line, they're finding a way to score. They're getting the best defensive pairings that they're playing against. They can still find a way. Islanders need their best guy to be their best guy. They aren't going to win if Barzell does not play well in this series. Plain and simple. My prediction, though, because you know what? Islanders have always been one team that I really liked. They just have always been terrible in my lifetime. I wasn't born until 86, so I was born after the dynasty. I did not get to see those times. Closest I've seen to them going to the finals was the year Dale Hunter took out. Who was that, Pierre Turgeon? Yeah. Well, that dirty hit that he got like a 20 odd some game suspension for, and rightfully so. Go check it out if you haven't seen the video of that. But I'm picking the Islanders in seven because you know what? I just want to see them do well. I really do. Nothing against Boston. I think, honestly, Boston could easily come out of this series as well because I thought they were going to have more of a fight from Washington, but Washington just kind of rolled over. Sorry, Capitals fans, but they did. But I'm going to pick the Islanders in seven. And you know what? I think Barzell's going to have a great series, and I think that's going to be the reason they go and win in seven. All right. I'm Also, I'm only doing the predictions because... God knows when the first round's going to end, so we're just going to have to do predictions individually at this point. Because, who knows, by the time we get to the conference finals, we may have a week off for certain teams before they even finish the entire second round. So, there you have it. That's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Other than that, make sure to comment. Let me know what you think. If you agree with my prediction, if not, let me know what yours is. And other than that, I will see you on the next video. Bye, everybody.